Everything we see on the news media, and a lot of people you talk to, if they watch the news quite a bit, they're just beside themselves almost. It's just unbelievable. We are, uh, limit myself to exposure to that anymore because it's the same thing you hear, the same thing going on. But we're living in a time with the gas shortage and what's going on with the gas situation. I remember uh, when the oil embargo happened here in America and you had the license plate. The day you could get gasoline and then the, you had to wait till your time comes to buy it again. And they were shutting down everywhere. People were getting laid off everywhere and Things were just totally upside down. We thought that was the worst thing. It was just, it was a terrific, bad situation. Uh, but as we have learned, we overcame that. Uh, for a while, we were a better country. It's like 9-11. When that happened, it shook us to our foundations for a little while. And then we began to turn our attention uh, to other things and our troops. We still need to pray for them. The men and women who have served uh, in combat and in and, and, uh, operations that's taken place over there for over 10 years will never be the same, regardless, because you do see things. Things happen, so we need to remember them. But now we're in a different time. This time is something we have never seen before in our lifetime with the COVID, with the riots, with all the things going on all the time, continually bickering, uh, the kids not being able to go to school, the teachers having to deal with, I don't know what all they're dealing with, but it's a lot. Uh, all these things are continually, that's all we hear. That's all we're involved in. They affect our life all the time. Our kids, our college kids, our high school kids, uh, elementary all the way through, but especially the older kids, this is a great mental strain. They already have enough difficulties in life until all this came together and shut everybody down. Uh, we know the suicide rate is up quite a bit with our young people. Uh, with a lot of people, it's happened over COVID and things like that. But it's much deeper than that. We are in a spiritual war. That's what we're into. And we get can get tangled up very easily, taking sides or anything of that nature. But it's not about we can't fix this politically. You can't vote somebody in or somebody out and everything's good. It's not that way anymore. People don't talk to each other anymore. When's the last time you talked to somebody and just had a civil conversation and you differed on things somewhat? It's very difficult to do. We're, people are geared up. They're just wound up. And we're, it's like we're having a raging going on inside of us. But in Philippians chapter 4, and we'll find something about how God, how we can together conquer this worry and fear and anxiety that we're involved with. Now, there's only one way, in my opinion, and that's God's Word. They're trying everything else, everything else. It doesn't fix anything else. We know as Christians that our responsibility is to preach and teach the Word, to minister to people, to love people, to let other people see Jesus in us. Now when people uh, get aggravated with you or talk to you and you start trying to express that to you, well, there's a reason. It's not that I have an opinion to hurt you or do anything bad about you or cause you problems or add to your problems. It's the Word of God. He tells us in His Word how we're to live, conduct ourselves. 
and what is right and wrong in his eyes, in our eyes. And we, as born-again believers, have the Holy Spirit in us. Now, how much the Holy Spirit has of us is up to us. And I'm going to read a, a few verses. I'm going to read one, and we'll go. i got a few verses here I want to talk to you a little bit about tonight. And uh, the first one is chapter 4, verse 1. I mean, first, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Now, we have to remember to rejoice in the Lord. We are, should be the most positive people in the universe. Because we have the hope. We know the answer. We understand, hopefully, the answer. It is in the Word of God. It is in the Holy Spirit as He comforts us and takes care of us. And we're to always do this. Think about this. And then in verse 5, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. This is our great weapon, our prayer life. Always remember, He's as close as we want Him to be. The issue is for us is being in a place where He can minister to us and we can let the Holy Spirit lead us. Always remember before you go into prayer, go into praise. God desires our praise. That's just praise the Lord. I hope you've heard that song. It's a great, great song. Let us just praise the Lord and give Him the honor and praise for He is the hope. He is the great salvation for us. Christ died for us. He paid the sin price for us. We have to accept it. We do accept or reject it. But when we ask the Lord Jesus to save us, we receive the Holy Spirit. You can't be saved unless you have the Holy Spirit coming into your heart. That's what makes you a new creature in Christ. And it's very important for the world today to understand that. They don't understand us, and to a certain extent, uh, we can be very diverse in our own self. As we look at the word Christian, the word church, and people out in the world have different views of this, and they look at us, and they want to know, well, is this what God looks like? Not always, because you name the name of Jesus, and you can use religious uh, words, and you sound authentic. What is the difference in your life is the Holy Spirit. When you come to Christ... And He comes into your heart. He will change your life. I promise you that. You can't not be a Christian and not have your life changed by the grace of God. Now we begin to go forward from that point. And we begin to understand what Paul's writing here to the Philippians. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. <coughs> Excuse me. We are to be careful what we do, what we say, and how we say it. But it's not because we're being judgmental or we're being uh, legalistic, telling you what you can or cannot do, what you should look like, what you shouldn't look like, where you should go and what you can't go, where you shouldn't go. He is, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. God will give you the direction you need in your life to give you that power you need to be able to walk with Him. And He will bless you and you will know that He is real. He is in your heart. When, you get, when I get away from Him, I get a little distance between me and the Holy Spirit. And that comes because I'm not praying, I'm not praising, I'm not worshiping, uh, I don't spend any time with Him. What happens to you in your your mate, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, people you're around a lot, if you don't spend time with them, you get a little indifferent, you get cold, you get a little out. But as soon as you know that you're doing this, you go back and try to make things right and get things going like it should. 
The Holy Spirit will tell you because he becomes, you feel distant from him. You don't have that relationship with him. He's not giving you the power you need. You can't love the unlovely unless he first know and understand the love of Christ and how he loves you. You can't solve any issues in life. We can't fix other people. Most of us already know that. If you don't, you'll find out eventually in your life. You can't fix other people. But you can tell people about Jesus, the one who can fix problems for them and his situations for them. It's yielding to the Lordship of Christ. Uh, we shouldn't worry. We're going to pray. Six and seven, as I said a while ago, in the peace of God, in verse seven, this is once we've prayed, in verse six, in thanksgiving, let your request be made known to him, in verse six, unto God. In verse seven, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The news media is not going to do you any good keeping you any peace or even keeping your mind. You can't do that. Our peace and hope and joy is in Jesus. It's about Jesus. And he, when he changes your life and you start as a newborn child and you that have children, grandchildren, uh, have had parents that loved you and gave you direction, you understand that I learn in steps, baby steps. But once you get to understand in your prayer life, you're only as close to God as you are in your prayer life. You communicate with the Lord God, with the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit. It's through your prayer life. You can do nothing in your own strength because in your own strength, you're walking in the world. You're in the flesh. You're doing what they're doing. You're copying them. You're trying to solve your problems like they do. Why are they like this? Why are they like that? I must. I need to be like that. They won't like me or have anything to do with me. It's probably true. But this is what the church is. This is where we come together as a family. I was with uh, somebody today and we was talking. Dale and I got to do a little visiting today and we was talking to somebody that, uh, and we were talking about family. There's blood family that you have. Um, while you're in this earth, you're always going to have them. Good, bad, or indifferent. That's just part of life. I chose to be at this place. I chose to have these people become, y'all, become a part of my life. We are a family bought with blood, the blood of the Lord Jesus, to never be taken away. We are a family. We've got to treat each other as a family. We've got to love each other. Then the world needs to be able to see this. And they will because you're very very—you're a duck out of water. You know, all the ducks swim the same. They do all the same all the time. If you're, I like to watch ducks. And you see them swimming around, doing different things, but they're all doing the same thing. Head goes in, head comes up. I got me something to eat. And that's just what they do. They see us as diverse as we are. And we're very diverse. But we love each other. In Christ, we are family. Paid for with the blood of Jesus. We are the church that he died for at Calvary. We are a gift to Jesus. To take before the Father in heaven. We know that when, when the, this time is over, here, we'll be presented... For our time is over here. We'll be presented as a group before the Lord Jesus. As a gift, we are his bride. Can you remember when you got married or thought about, you see you've been in weddings and things. You hope these people just love each other so much in love. Oh, what a sweet thing it is. What a wonderful thing it is. It's the same way it'll be because we're the bride of Christ. We're going to be presented to Jesus. Jesus is going to permit, present us to the Lord God the Father as his bride. So we have this different relationship with Christ. And that's the only reason we have it. It's because of Jesus. You don't have to get frustrated, depressed, and it's a hard thing to do, not to get depressed, stressed, anxiety, frustrated in the society we're in today. Nobody's ever seen it. It's not like you're 
fighting an opposing army with weapons. Now, we can use weapons, but it only results in more chaos, doesn't it? We need peace and joy in our lives. And that only comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we find here in verse 7, he says, And the peace of God which passes all understanding, and let me tell you, it does pass all understanding because people that don't know Jesus, they ain't got, they go, what is wrong with that person? That person's odd. They're just different. They are different. We are different. And as we grow in the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and we begin to pray and, and praise and worship Him, He becomes, He draws closer to Him. And we start getting away from Him and start sliding away and get tangled up in these groups or tangled up in your own self and things around you, and you just get uh, so difficult times for you. We've got to remember that the church is here to help you, to pray for you, to love you. And you need, when you get that cold feeling, and it comes, none of us, none of us anywhere is above having that happen to you. Uh, the old preachers that I've listened to some been a long time used to hear, I heard a message one time on a uh, backslider. He used a little more words than that into that. But it's really true. We do slide away from our love of Jesus. We get busy in life when things are going good for us we don't need anybody we're going along everything's great and then all of a sudden you know things don't get tangled up we get in the world and get wrapped up and things get not so good then we have to remember we remember i was praying the other night and i was just thinking about tonight and i was thinking about something entirely different and it's like a the spirit of god that says you need to take care of your own self, and you need to get yourself straight. And this is what you remember when you got like that. What did you do? What brought me back? What got me back on track? It was the Holy Spirit. It was being around loving people, people that cared for me and loved me and, and inspired of me sometimes. And this is what we're talking about here. Don't worry. Pray. Learn to think right. That's really important for us to remember this. We find this in verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are uh, honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if any, uh, it be there by any praise, think on these things. This is how you defeat this anxiety, this stress and strain and fear in our lives replace it with the word of god learn to read the things of god read the promises of god what does he promise us what is the bottom line eternal salvation through the lord jesus christ he paid the price for my life he paid the price for my sin he knew when i was born that i was a sinner i understood that pretty quick growing up uh, but he, for, I, when I understood the grace of God and he came into my heart, I knew that I was a forgiven person, that I was born again, new creature in Christ. He began the slow process of dragging me along sometimes and leading me along, along in life. We find here, I wrote some, a note down here that uh, learn to think right. Christ-centered, not problem. We're thinking problem-conscious all the time. What about thinking about what does Jesus want us to do? This will fix a lot of problems if people come together as a body. It'll fix your problem if you come together with yourself and your relationship with Jesus and think upon the Word of God. What did Jesus say? That's a lot for us to just take our time, go through the Word, be sure you stay in it, be sure you pray and seek Him. And I promise you, on the authority of the Word of God, if you're a born-again believer, He will speak to you in your mind, your spirit. It'll just go, oh yeah, I remember. You know, I, I, I remember these feelings I had. I remember the things. I, sometimes it's not so good. You don't want to remember things I've done I had to confess and, and turn away from. But the Holy Spirit was there to help me, to move me along in that process. 
But problem consciousness, we need to be thinking uh, positive truth will change the negativity and anxiety in the believer's mind. The only way to conquer this is replace your fear and anxiety and the troubles in your life with the positive power of Christ. And I'm, not, I'm talking about the blood of Jesus has been applied to my life. Then you have no right but to think about right. This is what's right. This is what he told me he would do for me. And he promised to answer all my prayers. If I come and seek in his will for my life and his will for the situation I'm praying for, he has promised to give me the answer for that. Now, he's not going to answer my prayers if it's all selfish, if I want things that don't matter. And he don't mind giving you things like that. It won't hurt you. But sometimes we don't do too good with things that don't matter. We get too much stuff. But he's trying to, the Word of God tells us, I will give you an answer. And sometimes you'll be praying about something, thinking about it. Next day, he just goes, just like that. Oh, yeah. The positive power. We should be the most joyous people you ever meet. People should want to be around you because of the power you have in your life with Christ dealing with the problems that you have that's going on around you. Because we all got problems. And problems don't ever leave us. Uh, as long as we're in the flesh here, we're going to have problems. Family, work, everything. Because of stress, full of stress and anxiety if we try to fix it ourselves, We must allow the Holy Spirit to fix it in our life. We find also, uh, in verse 9, those things which we have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Do what the Word of God tells us to do. It's hard. It's not simple because you have to act on faith. When you've got problems going on everywhere in your life, things are always going to be something going on in your life. That's just human beings. But it's not about me. It's about the Lord Jesus. And what does he want me to do? How does he want me to react to this? How does he want, what does he want, how does he want me to move through this? What does he want us to do now in our environment around us, around the country? We're to pray for our country. Pray for our leaders. I pray every night for our federal, state, and local governments, our law enforcement, our first responders everywhere, our military personnel. I pray for them. First, for their salvation. Secondly, if they're not walking with Jesus and they know Him, that they rededicate their life and, and follow Christ. We are to encourage them and protect them and take care of them as they're trying to protect take care of us. Even the ones that are lost don't know Christ. Everybody's not born again. And you realize and understand as we go along in this life in 2021, there's a lot less people involved in church and Christianity and preaching and teaching the gospel than they were two years ago. You know, we, just, we can see around and see what happens. But remember, He loves you. He loves me. He loves the church. The church is the gift that he's going to present to the Lord God. It's his pride and joy. He's purchased this church. Not Mount Pleasant, per se, but the believers here. This place is a place where we come together as a group and worship and do ministry and help people and do things for them. Love our children. Love our children. Love our teachers. All the our men and women who God has called and set aside for the full-time gospel ministry. We're to help them and encourage them, financially help them. I do whatever's necessary to, to help them, sustain them in their life and their work. I can't imagine. Uh, I appreciate Dylan a great deal, our pastor. I can't imagine being a pastor, uh, preparing all these messages and things that, that you have to do. It takes a lot of work and time to prepare a message. But God has called him and gave him the gift to do this, a joy and love in his heart for Jesus and a love in his heart and the Holy Spirit's you know, there to help him along. And he, you, you, if you're around him a lot, if you've not been around, you need to get to know him. He's a, got a sweet soul in him that the Holy Spirit has given him. It's a great, uh, 
I learn a lot. I'll enjoy being around other Christians. It doesn't take you about five or ten minutes. Most of the time anymore, I'm getting, as I get older, I get a little more uh, hard, I guess, to say, hey, do you know Jesus? You go to church anywhere? Well, I don't go to church anywhere because I don't like that so-and-so or whatever. Do you know him? That's what I really want to know. Do you know him? Yeah, I'm a member of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church or wherever I'm going. Not what I ask. Do you know him? That makes all the difference in the world. We find in verse 9, the writer, the, the notes I made here, I, 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 looked, I watched through the years and uh, things that really impressed me, I always make notes in my Bible. And, and if I've got an empty page, I'll go in there and put them down. Because uh, through the years, I've got a, my Bible, this one's come apart, so I just, I've cherished it a little bit. I've had it for a long time, but my other one, I'm marking it up pretty good too. But in verse 9, we do see uh, to learn to do right. You must respond, practice the truth. You must relate to people in the truth of Jesus. That's the only thing that makes you different. That's how they know you're different. You start talking about Jesus, they go, oh, what's the matter with you, man? Uh, what's the matter with me? Look around. Look around. Another thing that the writer wrote that I made me a lesson on, it says to uh, learn to think and act like a Christian who has confidence in the Lordship of Christ uh, in my life. That's really important for you, for me. What makes me different? Of course, we know that. The Holy Spirit being born again and the Holy Spirit coming in. But I've got to practice that. I've got to work at that. It's not something you just... Go get you a big drink of water and sit down. Well, sooner or later, you're going to get thirsty again. You need to continually drink of the Spirit of God. And that only comes through praise, prayer, and worship. That's what we do. We come together on Sunday morning, corporate worship. Very important. I don't have the gift of playing an instrument that you and your son do, and I, I appreciate Sunday. I got such a blessing out of that, and y'all are very good, but the spirit of how they did this is so essential for me. They did it out of love and joy. You can see the joy on Dad's face. I love watching that. This blessed me. It encourages me. He revives me in my soul, and I need this continually. I appreciate our staff here that works and does so many things that people don't even know. And all the people that's involved with that daily that gets into things and does things, takes care of people, and it's never mentioned. And they wouldn't want it mentioned because this is their blessing in life. This is where they're getting their uh, closeness with the Holy Spirit as they do the work for Him. Uh, also, a confidence in the Lordship of Christ, my life in maturity we gain confidence in the presence of God and the praise. We get more confident in life. We get more confident with each other and live at loving other people. I once thought about this. I thought about Paul, and Paul wrote this. And Paul knew that he was going to be executed. All of them pretty much knew that. And John was not physically executed. He was just left on a hole in the wall, and he just eventually died, you know. But he, right before he wrote a lot of scripture for us, he left revelation for us. And people say, well, how do you know what this means? I don't know everything, and I don't tell you that, but I'll tell you one thing. The Holy Spirit will teach you if you read his word. All of a sudden, it just comes up. Yeah, oh, I understand that now. I've read this ten times, and I didn't have a clue, but all of a sudden... He opens up your spiritual eyes. You're not looking through that smoke-covered or dark glass now. It's bright. And you see it and you go, oh, wow, what a blessing. And when you're blessed like that, you never, ever forget it. You go pray for somebody. And you go into that room to pray for somebody or that house or wherever you're at. And they want you to pray for them. I'm talking, this is a serious, not one of these things where, well, say a prayer for me. i got to go to the dentist or i got to go get a checkup. And that's important, too. I, I, would, I would pray for somebody like that. But me going out the door and saying, Lord, be with Ricky. 
That's not the same as me getting to a quiet place and getting down and meeting with the Lord Jesus and praying for this person. Because when you pray for somebody, your spirit is relating to God for this person. You're, you're, in a, you're working on their behalf. This and the Spirit of God will touch you and you will know you've been touched. It's nothing like that. When you're praying and all of a sudden the, you just feel that power. You want to sing. You want to worship the Lord. You can go somewhere and sit on a creek bank or wherever you want to go and just start singing praise songs to Him. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Oh, Jesus loves little children, yellow, black, or white. They are precious in His sight. That will bless your heart because you're doing it in faith in the Lord Jesus. We also, finally in this, uh, as we get older, more mature in the Lord, the confidence of the presence of God. This is what I was talking about, the singing, praying. We're going to, we're really praying about starting a Sunday night service. And what we're going to do is, is have a prayer service. Whether it's one, two, or three, or whatever. But when you come in here on that prayer service, it's our intention that you're, prayer, the prayers that you want to pray about this thing, we will turn our attention to that prayer, what you need, and really try to meet with you and meet with God and allow the Holy Spirit to hear our prayers because we're sincere. If the Lord continues to lead, that's kind of what we're thinking. I want y'all to know that because y'all will understand what it's like to come together and pray. Not just... It's, Always when we pray, God is with us and we're really seeking Him. But you come together as a group, two or three are gathered together. In my name, I am there also. So with confidence you can know that the Holy Spirit is there. When you start praying for people for salvation, for healing, for direction in their life, for help and live in their life, and you know it, and you make a Maybe we'll have a board or something and put something on there so we'll know. We want to know when those prayers are answered. It's not just to pray for something. It's to pray for the body to know that God is alive and real and meets your needs and He will answer your prayers. It's one thing to just pray and seek God and hope everything's going to be all right. Often, again, I was thinking about Paul and his disciples who they were executed uh, for their faith in Christ and walk with him. I often thought about what it'd be like if I was, uh, they came to my house and got me, picked me up, and take me to the, where are they going to take me to? And tell me if I do not denounce the name of Jesus, they're going to cut my head off or whatever they're going to do. Well, the problem, I would, I thought about that. I said, well, I need a little time to pray and get ready. But you know what? I couldn't do that. There'd be nothing left of me. There is nothing left of me. What would I do without Jesus? Where would I be without Jesus? How could I survive without the Holy Spirit? And once you've tasted of Him, once you know that He's there in your heart and you have a desire for Him, how could you live? You couldn't. They'd just be, you'd have no life. You'd be a shell of a person. Have you seen people that spent half their life in church and just, and all of a sudden they get tangled up in something and they leave? Or they get mad at whatever happens in their life. They get unhappy and they leave. And they're just out here. And you watch their lives. They become a shell of the person because when you push that Holy Spirit away, he, you will get cold and indifferent. And there's no joy, no peace, and no eternal happiness in your life. And there's nothing, no amount of money, nothing in this world can take the place of that peace and joy that the Holy Spirit gives you. Thank you all for being here tonight. We're going to pray for a few minutes, and then I'll come back and, and close the service.